Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I don't know if Penn State fans are gonna like what four-star defender Jalen Harvey has planned right about now. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, that is right. You are locked on Nittany Lines. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And we bring them back from said network, the recruiting analyst, the official one for the Locked On Podcast Network, also now the host of Locked On Seminoles, Locked On Knowles. It is Brian Smith, and he returns. And we're talking some recruiting, even though there's football this weekend, week zero. And then Penn State takes on West Virginia in due time Saturday, September 2nd, under the lights. And there's plenty to get into with that because recruits are going to be visiting that game. But one recruit that isn't visiting that game, at least as of right now in this time, of course, we're talking, this is going to go up Friday, August 25th, the return of high school football in Pennsylvania, uh, as it is and across the country for a lot of schools. But Jalen Harvey is going back to Southern California, USC, the Trojans. They have a week zero game against the powerhouse of San Jose State. And <laughs> Jalen Harvey and Jalen Harvey is going to go see that very anticipated high profile game. Uh, but this this doesn't have a good feel. Now, now here's the difference, right, Brian, is that USC doesn't have a game or it does have a game, excuse me, and Penn State doesn't have a game this weekend for August 26th. But sure. the following week, it would be nice if Penn State were able to follow that up with a visit for Penn State West, West Virginia. At least at this time, he is not on the visitor list. So concerning, yes, I'm starting to get the feeling that Jalen Harvey, because at, there's people in the comments, there's things that I'm hearing from the recruiting verse, and maybe you can back this up, that he's really interested in USC and his family really wants him to go to USC. So is this... Did Penn State lead all the way through until the final two minutes of the game at this point? If the family really wants him there and he's taking a visit, there's definite reason for red flags. That's not good when the local school doesn't have the family. That that usually works the opposite. So that's interesting. I would say based on his history as a recruit, that he was always going to be a signing day guy, regardless if he was committed. Yeah. But your information makes it even more so. I don't care if he commits to SC, Penn State, or otherwise. He's a signing day guy for me. He, he's all over the map. Yeah, four-star edge rusher. Again, Rivals has him as a 5.8. A very good player. And this is someone – he has always been a priority for Penn State. I want to reiterate that for everybody. Harvey was someone that, like Malachi Williams, they essentially had them as a 1A, 1B, and they didn't want to pick between the two. They have Williams, but now they're kind of fighting until the end with the Trojans for – uh, a commitment from Jalen Harvey here and he's got good tape. He Quincy orchard, a very good school. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a team that w- ultimately makes the high school playoffs in Maryland wins a state title. Uh, and he, he's a big reason for it. But uh, Brian, is there, is there a point in time where it's like, okay, this has been going on long enough. It's make a decision. Now it sounds like this is, this is coming from happy Valley insider.com directly is that, they anticipate a commitment. So you mentioned signing day, which is still a couple of months out, all the way into December. He could actually make a decision in the next three to four weeks. Which one would you lean towards more based on that? Oh, that's a two answer. Number one, he might commit, but I don't care if he does. <laughs> He's a yeah. kid. You go by actions, not words. Okay. We've heard 80 times that he was going to do something, yep. make an announcement or whatever. At this point, he's a teenager that's confused when he signs on signing day. Oh, no. Uh, there's a, I, I live in Florida. We have more of that where I'm at than where you're at. But uh, he's a kid that's coveted, and he's probably enjoying the process, too. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to L.A. for the weekend. I can think of worse things to do. I get it. But commitment or not, I don't put much stock in it. I just want to see – I want to see Penn State follow it up. Okay, if you're going to go to USC one weekend – at least go for the helmet. It's the helmet stripe game against West Virginia, but it's under the lights. It's a night game. You and and this is something I we're gonna have some more thoughts about Penn State West Virginia. So I don't want to get into it entirely because that's for the final segment. And it and it, these are good points of how important this game is for both the Nittany Lions and the Mountaineers. Sure. But I, I just you go you you have something planned for USC San, and uh, San Jose State, but. The, doesn't follow it up with Penn State West Virginia. It just it just doesn't feel right. Couldn't disagree with that. I mean, 
that's the easier game to go to. When I was growing up, Penn State, West Virginia was a game I always wanted to watch anyway. He may not know much about it. Maybe it doesn't mean as much to him. Yeah. But Jalen would do well to go to that game. It'd probably be a lot of fun. It is Locked On Nittany Lines. We're talking recruiting with the national recruiting expert here at Locked On. And that is Brian Smith and still Messiah Mickens committed. So Penn State fans have something to be happy about here. 20. Now you got to wait. You got you to be patient. But it, class of 2026, this I, I'm going to bring up a lot of points. I said the everydayers remember what I said about Messiah Mickens originally. And I'm going to reiterate that with Brian and see what he has to say about that. Before we get to that, let's hear from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is Game Time. Game Time, great app for tickets and everything else. If you're sometimes going to those favorite events can be stressful, and I totally understand that. So that's why Game Time became the place to go for the fastest and easiest way to get tickets. Last second, too, you can plan ahead, and it's for anything sports, music, comedy, any event that you want to go to. And you can use game time for those last second tickets. You get flash deals as part of that for the last second tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event and images of seat view. So you know exactly where you're sitting when you go, even before you go to the game. So lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection as well. So there, there are a lot of benefits to using game time. And Locked On listeners and viewers get a special deal with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account. And all you got to use is promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem that code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And Locked On Nittany Lions is your go-to podcast for HappyValleyInsider.com. Check them out. Penn State versus West Virginia, a little over a week away. You're watching this on Friday, August 25th. Yeah, but uh, the Saturday, the day after, we are officially within a week of Penn State football returning. Also, we had our Big Ten preview, courtesy of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's up on Locked On Nittany Lions. It's over on Locked On Big Ten. If you want to hear from me and get that full conference perspective along some of the other counterparts from Locked On Buckeyes, Locked On Wolverines, I highly encourage you to check it out. That is the Locked On Conference preview available wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube. Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. Brian, let's get back to it. Messiah Mickens, uh, currently a four-star consensus top 30 player in the country. Messiah Mickens, a running back out of Trinity High School in Pennsylvania. So once again, James Franklin says the uh, best in Pennsylvania do stay in Pennsylvania. That's a fact of the matter. And some people might say, well, he's currently not the best running back. How can you say that? Because I have said that Messiah Mickens is the best running back in this class. If you look at the rate, I so watch the tape, first of all. And you make your own judgment, but I know you got to go through, you know, this is our job, right, Brian, to go through multiple running backs and to say, okay, what little aspects about their game really differentiate them from each other? And you look at the ratings specifically, because 24-7 on three have ratings in for him, as well as his other running backs in 2026. And these guys are split up by decimals, honestly. They're, they're split up by decimal points, pennies on the dollar. It is that close. It, I, you could consider it a three-way tie at this point. But when the class of 2026 rankings are finalized, by the time you get into that cycle when they are seniors, I will sit here today and know that Messiah Mickens, if everything goes right, he has a good high school, great high school career because he'll have a great one, that he will be the top running back in the class of 2026. And the most important part of Messiah Mickens committing to Penn State, even though it's this early, people are concerned that maybe it was too early. How do you retain someone like him? Mickens is the face of this class now. You get building blocks. You have a foundation where you can get other recruits to say, hey, if Mickens is going there, I want to go to Penn State. So that's the most important part of this commitment. You not only get the type of player, but you get the profile of the player as well. He's an elite prospect. I don't really care what class he's in. I would take him if he was a 24 kid. Yeah. Uh, I don't care who's ranked number one at running back or whatever either. I mean, this is a future NFL running back if he continues on this path. He's just as good on defense as offense yeah. in terms of upside. His, his technique is not near as good, but he could play that too. He's an aggressive kid. He's a physical kid. Yeah. He could be a strong safety. This is just a great football player. There, there doesn't need to be a lot of discussion. I know people get just bent out of shape about rankings. It's crap. I don't care about those things very much. I know you're, you're part of right. I get it. But this kid can just play, flat play. You watch like three, four clips. You don't need to be an evaluator with this kid. Yeah. 
it's not hard. This guy has elite talent and he's already 190 plus pounds. Man, he's going to walk in the door, Penn State, physically ready. He's going to gain yep. 20 pounds conservatively before he gets to Penn State. Yeah, walk in the door and play. He's going to be a, he's going to be a dude. So it follow it follows this line of Saquon Barkley to Miles Sanders to now I know Noah Kane and Journey Brown didn't exactly finish the way they had started, but they were projecting the right way until Brown, of course, the off the field uh, medical condition and Noah Kane having the surgery to his knee and transferring out. But then Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen. So these high profile stud running backs. And you still have other ones on the way too. went Martin, Keandre Barker in the class of 2025. I don't want to leave out Corey Smith, Corey Smith in there in the 2024 and now Messiah Mickens for 2026. And Penn state is going to get another running back for 2025. They probably will try to get another running back for 2026. But when you get, and you look at the, uh, the recruiting rankings themselves, if you are already top 30 nationally, the reason Messiah Mickens and a lot of other, everyone, everyone at this point in time are four stars is because there just isn't enough tape. You've only played one freshman season. OK, there's only so much tape of you and people don't care. The recruiters don't care about peewee football or the analysts don't care about peewee football. So it's like, well, why isn't he a five star? When's he going to be the five star? As he goes through his sophomore campaign, he goes to more camps. He does some more summer workouts in front of the scouts. And then people will be able to make an official evaluation. But the fact that he is already in the top 30 means that he will be a five star if he stays in the top 30 because the top 32 prospects in these recruiting rankings are five stars because they project as future first round picks. That's just the name of the game. When it comes to recruiting, the top 32 players are essentially the top 32 in a hypothetical NFL draft. First round picks, when you think about it. Yeah, and I, I don't see any reason he shouldn't be ranked like that. Again, he could be an elite player if you just recruited him as a defensive guy. Again, the turn yeah. on the film, as you said, it will take care of itself. I, I like him most because of his vision, but the physicality yeah. and the way he makes guys miss is also very good. Very special talent. I hope he stays healthy and has a great career at Penn State. Yeah, you mentioned vision. I, I like the way that he he the cuts that he makes, like there's so many dynamic parts to his game. He's not just a one cut and go. Right. He's not just a power back. He doesn't try to beat you with speed. He can do everything right there. I what I do appreciate the most because as he's he's able to run by defenders, okay. We know that at the high school level, he's going to out talent uh and be phys out physical a lot of these guys. But what I the contact balance, the way he's able to absorb at, as a 14 year old going on 15 and Amy, maybe he's 15 going on 16, whatever. After a freshman season, the way that he's able to take a hit and not lose, not lose his balance. Cause there are running backs that will lose their balance. They'll recover. And then somebody catches them from behind. When you watch Messiah Mickens, this happens more often than not takes the hit and the defender bounces off of him. <laughs> the defender just flies all the way back. The, the low center of gravity that he has coupled with the speed, coupled with the strength and the pure balance. And Brian, I, 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 you might know this. Jordan Hill, former Penn State defensive tackle, NFL defensive tackle. Mike Motti, former Penn State linebacker and NFL linebacker, are his coaches over at Trinity High School. So the path for him from high school to commit to Penn State makes a lot of sense here. I'm not really surprised by it. Yeah. I mean, he's a local kid. He'll probably still take visits to other places or whatever, but yeah. I'd imagine he'll end up at Penn State. It's an easy it's an easy path with what success they've had at running back. Why would you blame a kid for picking Penn State right now? To, you know, There's a certain guy in New York that kind of makes it easy Ooh. among others. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting because it used to be Pennsylvania was really good about keeping kids home, and they lost a little bit of that, but they've turned it around, and this is a great example of it. Good job by the Penn State staff. As James Franklin, the branding, and then the, the results. The results matter above all else. People like going to Georgia because they are winning national titles. At least in this case, running backs like going to Penn State because Saquon Barkley happened. Then Miles Sanders and Journey Brown and Noah Kane were on the right path. And now you have Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen. Why wouldn't Quentin Martin, Corey Smith, Keandre Barkers all the way in Texas of all states. And we've talked, we've had that conversation, Brian, that Texas isn't exactly a recruiting area for Penn State. And no. now it has. So for Barker to come up to Penn State and say, I'm gonna, I want to go on the same path that Barkley Sanders, the rest of them have gone on the way that it's trending. And Messiah Mickens is like, I want in on that too. Because at the end of the day, all these kids 
They want to go to college to the best place that is going to prepare them for the NFL. hundred percent. I mean, you said it right there. They have all the ingredients and it doesn't hurt to have 110,000 people cheering you on. I'm yeah. sure when they take those game day visits or just even come to a campus when the stadium's empty, it's pretty impressive. So I, I, that's actually a bucket list. I've never been to a Penn state game, but there's a lot of reasons right now to like them. They're kind of on that cusp to make yep. the playoff, et cetera. So that's the next step to secure even more talent. But right now you can't really argue with how they're recruiting and how organized Penn state staff is. They're doing a great job. Brian, you are the recruiting analyst for locked on. Now you're the host of locked on Seminoles, locked on Knowles. Talk about that a little bit, your new show. It's pretty interesting because living in Florida, I mean, I hear about Florida state all the time. It's ironic because when I was a kid, Penn State didn't recruit down here. Now they're one of the best recruiting schools in the state of Florida, which is random. They're in on everybody. <laughs> but uh, Florida State is top 10 team preseason. They're similar to Penn State in the rankings, depending on yeah. you know, which poll you want to go by. Not that yeah. I put a lot of stock in preseason polls, but this is going to be a pretty fun season. Seminole schedule, they got to go to Clemson. They got to go and play a couple decent teams in a row. But I mean, if they get by this LSU game to start the year, Florida State could be playoff bound. It's pretty interesting because even if they lose to Clemson once, they're probably going to play them again in the conference championship game. So that's a really interesting football team. So I'm excited about it. I enjoy it. And I talk recruiting constantly. So it's, it's a lot of fun for me. And there's recruiting to be had at this Penn State West Virginia game. So you talk about a high profile game between LSU and Florida State to open up the college football season for both schools. Same thing. Now Penn State is a 19 point favorite. And on the sidelines, there's going to be a pretty long list of players and recruits that Penn State is going to be hosting. Brian, in this final segment, let's talk about just that. I, now, we're not going to go through and name it. We're going to name all the commits that are the commits, the recruits that are going to be on campus in Happy Valley for that. But I'm not going to okay, give me a recruiting profile uh, of this guy and this guy and this guy. But <laughs> I, I want to know the, the most important takeaways from this and, and which players that are like, man, he's going to be there. That is a big deal. So from the class of 2024, Peter Gonzalez, Cooper Cousins, Malachi Williams, Anthony Specka, Vabu Toure. These are guys are all committed. So I, I would like to see maybe some other 2024 prospects that are uncommitted, but Jalen Harvey comes to mind. Maybe a Nigel Smith out of the Texas. He's down to Texas, Oklahoma. That he's some that's Penn, he consider he's considering Penn State, even though they're on the outside looking in. Maybe if they can get him on, on campus in the middle of the season, that would be important. 2025 is the longest list. Michael Thomas III, and some of these names are going to be new for a lot of the everydayers. Brady O'Hara, Jaden Elijah, Joshua Williams, Michael Carroll, DJ McClary. That's a good one out of the New Jersey area. Uh, Marque Dorsey and Antoine Thomas. So there's a lot of a lot of names on that list that I like out of the class of 2025. And then 2026, Dylan Abram, Karan King, Maurice Barnes, and Samir Crosby. Uh, 2026, that's going to be, it's a little further out. We, Messiah Micken's not in that group. But 2024, solid. Guys that are really all for Penn State. I don't look at that list and say, Oh, those guys are fringe commits. They're looking to flip. If they're back in week one like this, that means they're all for Penn State. And that's not to say that people like Ethan Grunkmeyer, Luke Reynolds, maybe they do add to this list. Again, we're still a week out, so some names sure. could come on at last second. But just because someone isn't visiting that is verbally committed doesn't make me scratch my head and say, oh, man, I'm worried they're going to decommit. That's not it at all. I'm looking at 2025 a little more, and I see the names like Brady O'Hara, who's projected to Penn State, Michael Carroll's projected to Penn State, and then I like guys like a linebacker like DJ McClary. Is there any name on that list that really stands out to you, Brian? A couple of them. One I know, and that's because he's a Florida kid. And that's Tarvos Alford. That is a really good football player. Um, he can pretty much pick his school, Florida State, Miami, or whatever. If he's actually going to make that trip, it's a good sign for Penn State because that's a long freaking way up to Happy Valley from where he lives on the Atlantic coast. I also found it interesting that Trey McNutt's going to go, the kid from Cleveland. Uh, that's a really good player, and he can yeah. – another kid, Ohio State, Notre Dame, whatever. They got him on campus. They got a shot. Those two stood out to me. Yeah. And the the Florida prospect, uh, his, what's, what's unique about his game that Penn State fans should at least be excited about him entertaining and, and offer the opportunity to play? He can play in space. In today's game, linebackers that can't cover are linebackers that might as well be sitting next to me on the couch. <laughs> you you can't, you have to be able to run in space. And the old school Penn State, you know, Ohio State kind of linebackers from the 1970s, 80s, 
they can't do that. You got to have guys that can get out and are almost glorified strong safeties. Yeah. This kid's one of them, and he can hit. But yeah. his ability to cover will give him a chance to play early and play in different roles, be a nickel, be a dime. He can play in those roles, and he, he can play downhill too. So typical Florida kid that's aggressive and he likes physicality, but it's that speed, man. That's the difference. Now, I know Penn State is a 19-point favorite, Brian, going into this game, and that spread might go one way or another. It seems to be the consensus, and I'm not here to ask you for your, you know, who are you wagering on this weekend between the Nittany Lions and the Mountaineers? It's not the point. This is a regional game, okay? This was something that uh, you and I both agreed on even before the show is the fact that it's an important game for both sides because Penn State has been into some head-to-head recruiting battles against West Virginia, and this game kind of really settled, like how People look at this game and they say, okay, Penn State is ahead of West Virginia, but they want to get the the question that needs to be answered is how far ahead is Penn State? Is West Virginia that far behind? Is Neil Brown figuring it out? And then those kids that are in the Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia area, this region, they might say, okay, if Penn State wins, I mean, that's what happens. They go to these games and they say, all right, whoever, I'm down to Penn State, Ohio State. Whoever wins, that's where I'm going. Penn State, West Virginia. I'm down to these two schools, maybe a third. Whoever wins, that's where I'm going. Like that, some of these kids do process uh, their recruiting like that. I never really want to know sometimes what they use <laughs> because some of it, it's not very logical. What you just said is not. Uh, those are players that some of them are going to be gone by the time you get there. But yeah, nothing surprises me. In game moments, something they can take away though. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a great crowd. Like a lot of guys like me, my age, I'm 50. People are not going to forget about the rivalry games. Pitt, West Virginia, yeah, Pitt, Penn right. State. All, those three schools don't like each other. And they play very, very competitive games. Even when one is definitively better than another, they tend to be closer. They'll come up with something. And it's just fun to watch. So these recruits that are going to this Penn State, West Virginia game, there'll be something they take away from that they didn't know. I guarantee it. And that'll be good for both schools, to be honest, regardless of who wins. And it's something that Franklin and his staff can sell. Hey, this is what it's like to come to a Penn State game against somebody we're favored by 19. Now imagine you out there on the field against Ohio State. Obviously a better team. Yeah. And Penn State and West Virginia, you had the nostalgia from it. That's that's what I like yeah. about it. Do I want to play West Virginia, have the Nittany Lions play West Virginia every single season? Not necessarily. And the same goes for Pitt. But it is nice to return to the roots the nostalgia of it. I mean, the Nittany Lions and Mountaineers once upon a time, long time ago, <laughs> were rivals, but then conferences change. Penn State joins the Big Ten and everything. Everything becomes a little different here. But I'm glad that James Franklin in the scheduling, you have to plan out four, five, six years in advance. But they they return to some of these important games for the Keystone State, the, the Mideast area, if you will, the Northeast area, and – It'll be a lot of fun. And I think because Penn State and West Virginia go head to head with a lot of these recruits, that it is that much more of an important game. I don't care if Penn State's favored by 100. You have to make a statement in this kind of game. You're not facing, you facing West Virginia is more important than facing Delaware in week two. That's just the fact of the matter, even though you're favored in both games. Yeah, because kids don't care about going to the Delaware game. Yeah. I mean, it's, they might go for something to do, but. They'd rather see West Virginia, and rightfully so. Yep. It's the first game. You get to see what they're going to have this year, all the expectations. Now you get to put it into actual eyesight. That, that's, there's nothing like it. How good are you? Why would I want to come here? These kids envision themselves. It's going to be fun for them, and I'm going to look forward to the game too. Brian, I always appreciate the time. Anytime you join Locked on Nittany Lions here, folks, become an everyday or subscribe to the YouTube channel wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up to date with everything we do talking about Penn State football, Penn State football recruiting. And Brian does helps us do an excellent job of bringing you that recruiting news and analysis. So, Brian, I, I hope the fans appreciate you as much as I do. Thanks so much for coming back on the show. Look forward to it. And let's, uh, let's do it again soon.